Okay, in this video, this is going to be part two of my graphing conic sections, uh, graphing ellipses in particular video. And we talked about the definition of an ellipse, and we gave the equation for it, um, some standard equations. And in this case, I want to graph 4x squared plus y squared equals 16, and then the uh, kind of more tricky one, x squared plus 2y squared minus 6x plus 4y plus 7 equals 0. So... The first thing we're going to do, um, so let's graph 4x squared plus uh, y squared equals 16. And kind of the, the, the standard form was we had something squared, x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared. We wanted the number on the right to equal 1, and then we could basically start graphing it from there. So the first thing I'm going to do in this problem is simply divide everything by... 16 to turn it into our standard form. So we'll get x squared over 4 plus y squared over 16 equals 1. And now we can pretty much graph everything. This one isn't too bad at all. So um, as discussed in the previous video, this is going to be an ellipse that's centered at 0, 0. Um, if we take the square root of the number underneath the x part, so the square root of 4 is going to be 2. That's how many units I move to the right of the center. And that's how many units I move to the left of the center. And then we do the same thing. If you look at the number underneath the y part, if we simply take the square root of that number, whoops, if we take the square root of that number, we simply get 4, and that's how many units we move up from the center, and that's how many units we move down from the center. Um, so we'll be up here at positive 4, and we'll be down here at negative 4. Again, if you measured the distance between the points on the y-axis versus the po you know the distance between the points on the x-axis, the distance between the points on the y-axis is longer, so we, that is the major axis. So the vertices in this case would be 0, 4, and 0, negative 4. Um, we could again just kind of play connect the dots to make our little oval-shaped ellipse. Again, uh, not the best ellipse in the world, but not terrible. Likewise, if we wanted to find the foci, remember you just look at the numbers in the denominator. So if we want to find the foci, we just look at the numbers in the denominator. So c squared, we take the bigger number, 16, minus the smaller number, uh, 4. So that'll be 12. And c will simply equal the square root of that. And I could write 12 as 4 times 3, or we could write it um, as positive negative 2 square root of 3. So again, from the center, if we go up a distance, a positive 2 square root of 3 units, that will be 1 foci. And if from the center we go down um, 2 square root of 3 units, um, we'll be sitting at 0 comma negative 2 root 3, that'll be the other foci. Okay, so we've got a little, a little sketch there of our ellipse. So let's do this last one that's a little more complicated. Um, to graph the second one, to put it in the standard form, you're going to have to complete the square. So if you've forgot, forgotten how to do completing the square, I definitely have some videos on that. Um, I'll try to remember to put a link up, and you can check that out. So, um, again, to put this kind of in a standard form, what I'm going to do is I'm going to group my x terms together. So we've got x squared... We've got a minus 6x. I'm going to put my y terms together as well. 2y squared plus 4y. And I'm going to move the, the positive 7 to the right side by subtracting 7. And what we're going to do now is we're going to complete the square on the x's and the y's. So I kind of think about the x's as being one thing, and I think about the y's. I'm kind of grouping those together in my head as well. Um, be careful with your parentheses. Everything, you know, there's positives out front, so um, I'm certainly allowed to put parentheses in there like I did, but you do want to, you know, be careful algebraically when you're doing that. The first thing you do is you want the coefficient on the um, squared parts to be a 1. So the coefficient on the x squared is already a 1, so we're just going to leave that part alone. 
Notice the coefficient on the y squared is a 2, so I'm going to factor that out. But I can't just leave it 4y. That's not going to be correct. I would have to make that 2y to keep everything algebraically equivalent. And remember, with completing the square, so I'm going to leave myself a little bit of room. Again, this is the tricky step, I think, in completing the square for, for, for anybody, myself included. Um, you look at the number, um, so we'll look at the number in front of x to the first, that's negative 6. What we do is we take one half of that number, which is negative 3. We take that number and we square it, and that's going to give us positive 9. And that's the number we throw inside of the parentheses, the first set of parentheses, just kind of out of nowhere. Okay, we're going to do this for the y part as well. <coughs> So if I look at the number in front of the y, well, I'll take 1 half of that, which is 2. I'll get 1. And well, if I square 1, I just get 1. So I'm going to throw in a positive 1 as well. Now, I've added some numbers to the left side of my equation. I have to add those numbers to the right side of the equation as well, or I've done something algebraically incorrect. <laughs> Imagine distributing things out. If you were to distribute, if you were to undo the parentheses, we would get a 1 times a 9. Or I really, again, added certainly a positive 9 to the left side out of nowhere, so I would have to add a positive 9 to the right side. Notice if you just wrote plus 1, that's not right, because really if you did, if you undid the parentheses, we would have a 2 times a 1, which would be 2. We actually added a 2 to the left side as well. So I have to add another 2 um, to the right side. And now things will be algebraically equivalent. So again, I think that step, the completing the square step, that's certainly the, the tedious part. I think it's the thing most people forget. So you may want to take a, 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 a refresher on that. So the point of completing the square is we can now write each thing as a perfect square. So x squared minus 6x plus 9, that actually factors as x minus 3 quantity squared. Um, we've got our 2 out front. y squared plus 2y plus 1 is just going to factor as y plus 1 quantity squared. On the right side, well, negative 7 plus 9 is 2. 2 plus 2 will give us 4. We've almost got our standard form that we want here. Um, this one's going to be a little different in that it's not going to be centered at the origin. The last thing we do, we wanted the number on the right side to just be a 1, so I'm going to divide everything through by 4. So I'm going to put it back up here at the top. I've got x minus 3 squared over 4. Well, 2 over 4 is just going to simplify to a 2 in the denominator. Then I have y plus 1 squared, and now I've got the number 1 on the right side. Okay. So now we're in a good position to graph this thing. Again, it's not going to be centered at the origin. So in this case, you take the opposite of the sign inside. So even though we see a negative 3, we go over to positive 3. And even though I see a negative, excuse me, a positive 1, we go down to negative 1. That's going to be the center of our circle. So, excuse me, of this ellipse. I hope I haven't been saying circle too long. Um, so the center of the ellipse, and this is kind of the very first thing that I want to do. It's going to be a positive 3, comma, negative 1. So you take the opposite of the signs. And again, um, I'm just putting a point there sort of for reference. Certainly the ellipse does not go through that point. OK, and now I do the same thing as, be as before. I look at the number that's underneath the x part. I see a 4. If I take the square root of 4, I get 2. That tells me how far I move left to the left of the center and how far I move to the right of the center. And I put a new dot there. So if I move 2 units to the left of the center, I would be sitting at the point 1, comma, negative 1. OK, so I'm moving 2 units to the left. And then if I move two units to the right, well, now I would be sitting at the point 5, negative 1. 
So those are going to be two points on my ellipse. Okay. Likewise, um, we look at the number underneath the y part, which is 2. If you take the square root of 2, well, you get the square root of 2. Um, the square root of 2 is certainly a bigger, is a number a little bit bigger than 1. So in the y direction, I would have to go up square root of 2 units, and I would have to go down square root of 2 units. So I'm going to get another dot there and another dot up there. So let's try to label um, all of our points here. I think I just wrote a 2 instead of a square root of 2. Okay, so we said our ellipse was at 3, 1. So if we move 2 units to the right, that's 5, negative 1. This would be the point 1, comma, negative 1. Well, again, if we were sitting at 3, if we move up uh, square root of 2 units, we'll simply be at negative 1 plus root 2. And this point at the bottom <coughs> would be positive 3. Um, and then we would be at negative 1 minus square root of 2. And if you play connect the dots, that's going to give you a nice little rudimentary um, graph of your ellipse. Okay, so again, not a great graph at all, a very rough graph um, of our ellipse. If you wanted to find the foci, you could do the same thing. So c squared would be 4 minus 2, which is 2. So that means our c value has square root of 2. And just like before, to get the foci, what you do is um, you move this distance away from the origin along the major axis. So in this case, um, the major axis would be along the horizontal direction. It would be going through the vertices of 1, negative 1, and 5, negative 1. Whew, again, a lot of labeling here. So the center was at 3, negative 1. So if I move um, square root of 2 units to the left, I'm going to have one foci at, well, 3 minus square root of 2, comma, negative 1. And then if I move square root of 2 units to the right, I hope this is all legible. If I move those that, that distance to the right, I would be at 3 plus square root of 2, comma, negative 1. And boy, I hope I've labeled all this correctly. So again, you know, to graph one of these, you're going to have to be able to do completing the square to put it in standard form. I like to find the ellipse. And then I just find my new points by going, you know, so far to the left and to the right of the center, so far up and down from the center. I can find my C value. And again, that just tells me to find the foci, you go that distance along the major axis away from the origin. So definitely confusing. Um, I hope this helps, though. I hope it doesn't make it more confusing for you. Um, definitely practice a couple. If you still have questions or comments, feel free to post them. And uh, hopefully me or somebody else out there can help you out.